In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning, Christ is in our midst. God bless you, even with the uh, time change, you all made it. It's not easy, you know, especially before you go to bed. You know, psychologically, it's like, oh, I'm going to be an hour short. And then we see how we feel in the morning, but it kind of all pays off by the <coughs> evening when it's 7 o'clock, and it's still light out. Although every time the door opens, I can see it looks like a blizzard outside, which I didn't know that was coming for in March, but it was kind of a double whammy today. But um, God willing, by the time we're done, there's some sun and maybe it melts, I don't know, but that's, I don't know with Pittsburgh weather. Right? But today, as we get ever closer to great and holy Lent, we have upon us what the church calls Judgment Sunday. And upon hearing this, it might frighten some of us, or it it might sound intimidating, and some of us might even come today expecting to hear a sermon of like fire and brimstone, which we really don't do in the Orthodox Church, unless it's really needed. Even then, I don't recall hopefully ever doing anything like that. But even many of us know about the Gospel reading today, the famous words of Christ when He said, you know, When they said to him, when did we see you hungry or in prison or sick or thirsty or without food or clothing? He said, you know, in as much as you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Or in the least, you didn't do it to the least of my brethren, you didn't do it to me. And so, of course, all of us know it's a sobering reminder that holiness is often found in the places we least expect it. And so the least of Christ's brethren are like these vessels of humility that we are blessed to come into contact with. And that when we come into contact with them, that often their humility is so strong that it rubs off on us. And so that's the message uh, certainly we've given in the past upon this Sunday. But today uh, we're going to focus on something a little bit differently. Because I think this community has really, really knows well the meaning the obvious meaning of the Gospel reading. And as I know the lives of of so many of you, certainly you practice it. Any chance you get, you're very responsive to those in need. But believe it or not, on Judgment Sunday in this Gospel reading, there is a profound message of hope. Of hope to all of us out there and everyone out there who is struggling who maybe is sick, who perhaps is struggling financially even, who perhaps is short on food or really feels that pinch every time they go to the grocery store, to somebody who's short on clothing and would certainly like to remedy it, but they just can't. And the message of hope, brothers and sisters, is that if we are struggling, if we are suffering, if we feel like we're not doing it as well as everyone else that we kind of think is do- how they're doing it out in the world, it's okay. And the message today is that we're not being punished. There is no shame. God has not forgotten us. God has not abandoned us. And it doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong at all. Because if, if Christ has set apart those who are in the prisons and those who are hungry and thirsty and without clothing and those who are sick, those who are homeless, as a special group, as a holy group, then clearly it means they are not doing anything wrong, but that in fact, a special grace has been bestowed upon them even. And it's only natural that when we struggle in our life, we start to think, you know, what am I doing wrong? What missteps have I taken that God has somehow withdrawn His providence from me? But often He has not. But of course, as we view social media, or we watch TV and we see the commercials, it's hard not to slip into it. We're giving a distorted perception of how we think the rest of humanity is living. You know, buying luxury cars for each other at Christmas and investments in retirement and this and that. I could go on and on with examples. And we watch these commercials. I mean, how? You know, it's not us. Or social media. You know, we tend to show our highlight reels 
I'm falling behind. I'm not keeping up. I'm not like other people. I'm not able to go on these trips. I mean, what am I somehow doing this wrong? And very easily, you know, we fall into that mindset and get bitter. If we're not careful, we can feel shortchanged that somehow we were dealt not a, a fair hand either. But brothers and sisters, when we reflect on this Gospel reading, what Christ is warning us and yet encouraging us with is that there is a great dignity to humility. Humility is a dignity in one that is elusive to many. And it's a paradox. Because a lot of times when we're struggling, we might say, you know, I don't feel very dignified, Father. It's not very dignified when I have to wait to pay bills. It's not very dignified when I can't buy what I need at the grocery store. It's not very dignified when I have to wear the same clothing over and over again. It's not very dignified when I have to go to all these extra doctor's appointments. Or I live with chronic pain. It's not very dignified if I get myself into any type of trouble. But brothers and sisters, these crosses that we carry, and these struggles that we have, are carried by far more many than we realize. Those things are actually the norm. Not the exception. So if we're struggling with these things, it doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong. You see, there is a dignity there. A dignity that exists in the eyes of God, but perhaps not in the eyes of the world. And that's what throws us off sometimes. See, the world, the secular world, does not view humility as a dignity. Use it as a weakness. But we shouldn't worry about that. What we care most about is about what we are in the eyes of God. And God views humility as a dignity. And so knowing now that these struggling groups are such a model, that they're Christ's brethren, that Christ related with them. God related with them. We are called to emulate them. Right? To, to imitate them. And somebody might say, Father, what am I supposed to do? Like, put myself in prison? Am I supposed to like live a voluntary poverty? Make myself sick? Of course not. I think we all know that. But we are called to emulate their spirit. Their meekness. You see? And so when we have the blessings to encounter Christ's brethren that we hear about in the Gospel reading, we would do well to study them. And to imitate their meekness. As Christ said, blessed are the meek. Right? And very, you know, many of us can relate to admiring, you know, secular people. I really admire this person. I'm such a fan of this person. Maybe it's an athlete. Maybe it's an actor. Maybe it's somebody else. And we, 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 we tend to be very good at emulating people of the world. We know how to do it. We've done it many times before. But we also need to emulate Christ's brethren, the ones we hear in the Gospel reading. Of course, we can't emulate the physical circumstances of their life, but we can emulate their humility and their spirit by how they live. Their gratitude is a big thing. Just so grateful, so polite, no expectations. But yet they have hope and they don't have a whole lot of thoughts and opinions about things. You don't really hear them so much say, well, I think things should be like this and things should be like that. And they're not getting too upset about certain things not being a certain way because they've got bigger issues on their plate. And so that, the great irony, is a great blessing for them. You see, they have gifts that we don't have. And so for those of us in the world that are well-off or that are well-educated, it seems the more we have of those things, the less humble we are and the more elusive humility becomes to all of us. And so, brothers and sisters, as we head into great and holy Lent, heed the warning in the Gospel reading today. Study Christ's brethren. Right? Emulate their humility and remember to adopt the dignity of humility which might not be seen through the eyes of the world, but is seen through the eyes of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.